Greetings friends! For six years now, we lived here inside this 700 square foot yurt. But prior to living here, we had never been in a yurt before. And I had learned locally there was a lady that was living in a yurt, and before we set ours up, we went to visit her place for a little inspiration. And recently, we had a chance to go back and visit Rosa and her husband William and their yurt. Three. How'd they in? So it's been about seven years since we were here last. You remember it at all? Not really. Not really. <laughs> so you'd have been about what three? Yeah. And you weren't born. Yeah, you weren't here. <laughs> Not even thought yet. And you were and little. And you were just a little one year old like tadpole or something. <laughs> 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 so you don't remember it, do you? No? <laughs> Is your tongue I, not working? <laughs> I found out that the reason I don't remember Lacey and you coming here is because I wasn't here. Oh, Melissa probably. Okay. Don't you remember yeah. Melissa showed us around. I, I, yeah. I, I don't remember her that well, but I remember. Yeah. I do remember this very clearly. Yeah. So could you guys tell us the story about this yurt? How'd you get this to live in here, and the whole story behind it? What made you decide to use, set up a yurt? Well, the reason uh, we decided to move into a yurt, this happened before William and I got married. Uh, we've been married almost 11 years now, but the yurt has been here a little over 13 years. Okay. So about 13 years ago, I had left a corporate job and um, I started working in the mountains with the kids that get in trouble mm -hmm. and you, they go out hiking and they're out in the woods, kind of a boot camp kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to go to a advanced wilderness first aid course because we were out in the woods. If something happened to those kids, we really had to know what we were doing to take care of them. So they sent me to Idaho. And in Idaho, uh, the class was held in a yurt. And I'm like, what is this? I love it. It's just so unique to be in the round, you know? It's just a different feeling. So at that moment, things started happening in my mind. It's like, I like this, I want one, I want one. But the way it happened was um, I had always, uh, in my first marriage, we had wanted to have a beautiful, beautiful home. But we divorced and that never happened. So I thought, I wonder if I could make a yurt into that beautiful home. And that's kind of what I tried to do here. <laughs> it's a beautiful home. <laughs> it had, um, three things when I built it. And again, it was just me. My kids were grown. I didn't need much space. And so the rule was it had to be um, simple, bold, and elegant. Ooh. And so if it met that criteria, it could come inside the yurt. Ah. So that was kind of my, cause I was making the home of, you know, of my dreams. And that's pretty much what we did. And then um, about, Two or three years later, after I'd already lived here by myself for a while, uh, I met William. And uh, the way we met was pretty interesting because William is quite the adventurer too. He had lived in Alaska most of his life. About 20, 25 years of Anchorage. And he had businesses up there and everything, although he was a Concord boy. Yeah, correct? graduated in Concord High. And mm -hmm. Wow. I'll tell you how old I am, 65. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of good friends from, that graduated from there, too. But, uh, I went to Anchorage just to, for the adventure and the flying and the hunting, fishing and all that. and Loved it. And then just a lot of things happened. And I decided to, I, I moved to Hawaii. I lived on the big island. And then I moved to... Uh, uh, Australia and lived on in Brisbane and then uh, put a manufacturing plant in Korea and Seoul and so all over the Pacific and uh, Asia I was traveling and I geez those jet flights and stuff that <laughs> wear you out <laughs> and so I decided to come home and uh, I did and I, I started teaching and and I was my last teaching I taught at uh, Roy and Cabarrus Community College okay and I taught business and 
So we're really a pool hall romance. <laughs> <laughs> I was shooting, we were in their league's pool. Okay. And I was shooting nine ball and she's shooting eight shooting ball. Eight ball. Oh, wow. Uh, somebody said, uh, a friend of both of ours said, uh, you know what a yurt is? I said, well, sure, I know what a yurt is. They're all over Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got somebody you want to meet. So once you came here and you saw the yurt, it wasn't something foreign for you no, seeing them in Alaska. Not, so I mean, it was a lot nicer than what they got in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> and after knowing Rosa, it's going to be that way around Rosa. <laughs> I, I think when he first came to meet me and to see the yurt, uh, he came in and he just stopped dead in his tracks and he's like, wow, I wasn't <laughs> expecting this. But he had planned on uh, selling his home and living on a boat because he's a sea boat oh, wow. captain. A sailboat captain. And so moving into a yurt really wasn't that big of a deal for yeah. him. It's actually more space than really? on a boat. Yeah, I was uh, going to take a sailboat from like a... Uh, well, South Carolina, and I was going to go up the inland water and do what they call the Great Circle. You go all up through the Erie Canal and back down the Mississippi, and then you go back around and come back up. And I was getting planned. I had a boat picked out, and I met Rosa. And that's cool. <laughs> 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 well, we do on our honeymoon. We we went to the Virgin Islands and rented a 30, 32 footer, I think it was. It's been a week just going island to island. Oh wow, months. that's neat. So I still get some of that boating. Now we go over and rent catamarans and get our friends and go and stuff. But fun. But Mike, once I started building this, remember I'm single and the kids came over to help me. The kids were adults, of course, and they came over to help me. And they thought I had lost my mind. <laughs> They're like, what are you doing, Mom? This is crazy. And I said, no, I think this will work. I think it's going to be a beautiful home, and I'm going to move into it. So they helped me because they always help Mom, you know. And by the second day, Melissa, my oldest daughter, and I were looking back, and we both had started planning on, oh, we should build more of these. So it really caught on, and my family now are all your people. That is great. <laughs> So when we first talked about moving into our yurt, people thought we were crazy. Oh, too. they thought we were nuts. <laughs> yeah, they thought we were nuts. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to live? And, yeah. So we always say, we're moving into a glorified tent. That's what we always told them. Yeah. But it's been about seven years now. And this, this coming here seven years ago, yeah. it really need to look back because this has uh, really helped us to make the decision of living in the earth, just coming oh, here yeah. and visiting here and actually we actually saw this place in uh, mother earth news magazine before was so it? there's an we ad no you this year it was there's a few no, pictures in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or is it this or one? pacific yurts pacific. no it's pacific we, we yurts. Saw I on the website because we had bought our yurt and it was if we had bought a used one and it was sitting in our garage at the yeah. time yeah in Concord and then I had heard about this lady named Rosa in our area that had a yurt and then when I wrote I read their blog post about you I was like hey this is the same lady <laughs> could you guys show us around sure, sure it doesn't take long to do this steps from everything let's start over here and I'll kind of show you this originally was my office and what I decided when I put it up on Airbnb was to make it an additional sleeping space. You're going to see things like this. This is my handwork. I do quilting. I do a lot of sewing, so a lot of that you might see in the yurt here. Um, also, so we made this, and you can see my Oasis sign up there. Uh, when I first left my corporate position, I would sit out on my deck at the house next door, which is where I would raise my children. And I've lived here for a long time. And I would sit there and think, oh my goodness, this is such an oasis. This is my oasis. So to build the yurt right in the middle of this is just really special to me. So anyway, the extra sleeping space used to be my office, but now extra sleeping space. The living room. And um, again, just comfortable and where did you get a curved couch from? 
<laughs> they actually make a lot of them. They're called conversational sofas. Okay. And it kind of curves so that the people on either end are facing each other oh. to talk. So, but it fit perfect in a round structure. So that's why we went with that. Another thing that you'll notice whenever you come here is I talk to you about our travels. So we we do have a little blog. Uh, we have uh, Leeward Travels. But these are all of our pictures and the stories of where we've been. This one is European, uh, Cuba, uh, Israel, and Egypt, and let's see, Holy Land. And we've now begun traveling in the U.S. So this one's Washington and also some of Canada. Wow, so this you guys are some adventures. <laughs> last trip to Europe, we rented a car and went 5,000 miles in 12 countries. Wow, <laughs> that's <laughs> great. One we are definitely adventurers. That's what brought adventurers. That's what brought us together. Uh, he had, like we had talked about, had lived in Alaska all of his life. And although I don't look like a real adventurer, once you get to know me, I've always lived on the edge. So, so together we we make a, a really nice couple. All right, come on over. I'll show you the kitchen. All right. So, my, one of the things. Remember, I said it had to be simple, bold, and elegant. But I love to cook. So I put a lot of energy into my kitchen and um, I had everything custom made so that it would fit in here, but um, I had to have a nice range, big full size refrigerator, but then I'm like, okay, I got to have that dishwasher, but I didn't want it to be all appliances. So I kind of hit it here behind this. So it is oh. an actual dishwasher, but it looks, it does, it looks like a cabinet. Uh, but it's got everything that I needed. Um, also, if you'll notice, I do have a couple little artwork here on the refrigerator. These are some of our previous children that were guests. Uh, always meet our resident emu out back, and they want they draw pictures of him. That's great. That's so. cute. <laughs> All right. So and this see. kitchen is very spacious. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very well laid out. And then in here you'll see the the bedroom. Again, you're going to see all of my quilting because I love to quilt. Some of my hobbies are Indian flutes. Mm -hmm. I'm a flute player, and so I have some of that hanging. And then William uh, loves old cars. These are from Cuba. We took pictures of all in Cuba, and some things from Egypt. That's on papyrus paper up there. Oh, wow. So some of it. We don't collect a lot of things because when you live in a yurt, you don't have a lot of space, but we do try and get a few small things that we can remember some of our travels with. And beautiful. when the guy helped me build the yurt, um, I really like the open space. So to make a bedroom, we were leave, uh, losing some of that open space, but he added wood uh, for my ceiling and also made it round, which I thought was pretty unique. Oh, wow. So. And behind you, I have a full um, walk-in closet. Oh, wow. And remember, it was just me who was living it's here. okay looking here? <laughs> you can. <laughs> you have storage there, very well lit. And then last but not least is the bathroom. So come on in. I'll let you go in. Okay. You cannot live in a year without a washer and a dryer, so I found a place to conceal that. So oh, have wow. A, have a washer and dryer. Perfect. There. Right there. <laughs> yeah. So everything that you need, all in 702 square feet. Wow. Now, there is one more space. I said last, but there is one more space. So let me show you that. Okay. And if you want to go up the steps here, you will see our loft. Okay. 
This was originally built for our grandchildren. What I have upstairs now is a queen bed and a twin bed up there. And like I said, this was originally built for my grandchildren for their place to sleep. They love it up there. So Mike, I wanted to close off the bedroom, but I didn't, you know, in New York, you don't have a lot of space to swing a door. So we went uh, with this barn door type and um, they were back 13 years ago. It was pretty nouveau to have a barn door. They're a little more um, uh, frequent now in homes. But anyway, we, we had one of the first. And Beautiful door. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And the bathroom, does it close the same it, way? It's got a pocket no, door. It, no, has, regular door. it has a regular door, but if you'll notice, they match. That I, is I great. Had the doors made to match. That is fantastic. So, so how do you heat and cool your... your Excellent question. Before? So we started in the very beginning, I had just a regular heat pump and uh, in the winter time, we would always cover up with blankets. We were cold and all that. So my good friend is an air conditioning guy. And so he said, why don't you try this uh, mini split? So I went with this unit up here on the wall. We had the regular heat pump and the mini split. But now we just use the mini split. We took the heat pump out because that thing is so efficient. Uh -huh. And another interesting fact is our... Um, electricity bill with the regular heat pump was like $200, $250 in the winter. And with this, I think the highest we've ever had is like 100 at the max. Wow, that is fantastic. So it's way more efficient. It keeps <laughs> us warmer and cooler in the summer too. So we heat our yurt with a wood stove and we have a, a forced air system that we use to cool it in the summertime. But we're really thinking about going with this, this split unit there. So you definitely recommend it? Definitely. The, that's the way to go to, to heat and cool a yurt. Right. Speaking of that, let me tell you some of our number one questions. Because when people see this, they all of a sudden are they're like, wow. This is so cool. We need one ourselves. How do you build them? So, can I go over how to sure. build a yurt? Yeah, okay. definitely. So, in the beginning, um, I decided to do this, and you go down to the building uh, department, and they're like, a what? <laughs> but depending on your county, you can get permitted to build a yurt. And so, what you do is you start with the flooring, uh, and you build an open deck on the outside, just a deck. And uh, for me, what happened was, remember, I'm a single lady now by myself trying to do this yurt on my own. I finally found someone that would build in the round. Most people are like, oh, we don't do round. <laughs> it must be more difficult to do round than square. So anyway, we built the deck and made it circular. And then the next step is the lattice work. And you can see the lattice going all around the edge. Do you see that? And so you stand up the lattice work and you kind of stretch it out like a baby gate and add your doors. Um, and then to get the rafters to stay in place and hold the whole unit up, there's one key and that's that um, cable that you see up here. That holds all of the weight of this yurt. And um, so I was telling you that I found a builder that would build the round deck for me and then I just assumed that he would put my yurt up for me as well. But he said, oh, I'm afraid I couldn't do that. I might mess it up. So he left me. Oh, and um, so I called a couple of friends and they came over and in one day we had the structure up now my builder came back that night just to check on me and he looked at it like oh my gosh i can't believe you've done this so one day to put up the actual structure and then the next day we put on the covers so they go up pretty fast that is neat and where did you purchase your yurt from 
Well, there's a lot of people that build yurts today, but I only recommend Pacific Yurts. They are the founders of yurts. They are in Oregon, and uh, they just ship it straight from Oregon to here for us. Great. Rosa, thank you so much for showing us around and showing us your beautiful yurt. You're welcome. Hey, can we show you the outside? Oh, yeah. You got to see the outside. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Play at the ground. Yeah, I forgot about the outside. Part of living in a yurt, because you're, you have such a small space, you have to incorporate living outdoors as well. And so we built the decks, but the interesting part about the decks is all of the timber was cut from cedar right off of our property. Wow, so, that is great. Yeah. So we like that. So we're using the resources around you. Absolutely. And then um, we told you that William and I got married a couple of years after I had moved in. And the first project that I started William on was a cob oven. And he said, why do we need an oven? We've got an oven right there. <laughs> <laughs> something men don't understand. But my, my daughter uh, had given me a class for my birthday on how to build a cob oven. And so I wanted one and I talked William into helping me. And they're pretty neat. So let's go over and take a quick look at yeah. it, okay? So over here is our cob oven. So what we did with the cob oven was we used um, the North Carolina soil is um, like clay. Mm -hmm. So we use our own soil, uh, sand and straw to build this. And um, we even got a guy to build this part for us. So we built a pedestal for it. And then the first thing that we did was we started with a foundation. And believe it or not, the what's inside that foundation is wine bottles. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Empty wine bottles. That's pretty neat. <laughs> and the reason that we use the wine bottles is because it's insulation. Ah. And that keeps all of the heat in here. So um, we built it, like I said, with the uh, straw to insulate this and the clay to give it its form. But originally we only did, we did uh, pizzas is what we do most of the mm -hmm. time now. But originally we would use it for baking bread, for doing our Thanksgiving dinner, for making pies. Oh. But nowadays it's really a pizza it, oven, isn't yeah. it? But to get this opening here, here you get sand and you get it to the shape you want. Okay. And put newspaper on it. And then you start laying up the cob over that. Okay. And then when that's done, you take the sand out and that's the hole. Uh -huh. And this, the ratio of this hole to this is really important because it, it, you see there's no chimney. Yeah. So it, the way it drafts, the hot air, cold air comes in here, hot air comes out there. Uh -huh. and this stays absolutely cold and maybe five, six hundred degrees in there. Uh -huh. So when's the pizza party? <laughs> well, we will. So, I tell you, we, our pizza parties, <laughs> We typically, I guess the yeah, least the least number of pizzas we've ever baked in here is probably about 20. <laughs> we usually do, our parties are about, would you say about 50 pizzas? Wow. Yeah. He's, I do all the pizza dough. We make the pizza dough ourselves and set out all of our condiments. You make your own pizza the way you like it. Bring it out and William is the expert. Living in there. At, uh, <laughs> I put yeah. <laughs> but it's fun, and, uh, and you have to cover it because these, are, and, you know, this is the kind of oven they'd use back in Jesus' day. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can't be wet, so, so you have to cover it because it's mud. And uh, uh, similar to adobe, I would say, mm -hmm. but a cob. Right, but an interesting thing is when all of our travels, we've been to monasteries in Matoria, Greece and you're up in the monastery and what do they have? A cob mm. oven. <laughs> or all over Italy you'll see cob ovens. Everywhere we've gone we see these cob ovens. So we're it like, oh, we a, have one of those. Okay. There we go. <laughs> a village oven. Uh -huh. Once you get yeah. it up, you know, your family would yeah. cook and then the next mm -hmm. family would cook and you'd cook all day with it and cook dinner. And yeah. So it's kind of in the center of the village usually for, a, uh, for that. 
because it stays warm for a long time. That's yeah. neat. It's fun to do. But like I was saying, <coughs> is when you only have 700 square feet as your home, you need to include the outdoor living. So we kind of did some patios, and I'll show you over here. Um, we always have a fire pit because I'm a fire bug, of <laughs> course. So we spend a lot of time sitting around a fire mm -hmm. or swinging. Uh, or eat outside at night. Yeah. yeah. I love that swing. I need me one of those, <laughs> Michael. Well, you know, the key to it is these two pieces right there. You can order them pretty cheaply off the internet. Okay. And this is just standard full box. Oh, that's easy to do. Yeah, easy to do. Just slide it in. Yep, tell him how easy it is. It's easy to do. <laughs> Compared to what you do, this is nothing. <laughs> I can do that with those pieces. That makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah because the angle is right, pieces. you know, set right, and it's solid like a rock, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, with that Eastern Jungle, huh? jungle huh? gym? Eastern Jungle gym? Yep. Yeah. yeah, we'll buy that. Make that happen. Yeah, that's a good And we love it. Good. Sit out here and family comes and then this fireplace here is really we've gone through a lot of them but this is really um very effective for a nice fire and uh, call it a solo stone can you tell us a little bit about the uh exterior and the canvas and um how you did the uh, underpinning underpinning yes okay So when you order a Pacific Year, you have different choices in colors, of course, but also different weights of the uh, canvas. And I went with the heavy duty uh, roof um, because it's gonna be a place I was gonna live the rest of my life. So I wanted to make sure that it was uh, going to sustain during those years. And uh, I think it's rated for 20 years, which is kind of comparable to a regular uh, shingled roof and I think they're 25 years but the difference between a shingle roof and this is that whenever you need your shingle roof replaced you've got to call a contractor and have him do it when this one needs replacing you just simply order a new one and we take it off and we put it back on so remember it only took us um, a day to put these covers on like but I went yeah, I went with this <laughs> color because I thought it looked good in the outdoors. It was just I thought the maroon color looked good. And this also is the heavier duty one. Now, for the underpinning. Originally, what I was going to do was just leave it up on stilts because I thought that looked really cool. But I had put the all of my plumbing and my duct work for my air conditioning and all that and it didn't look pretty anymore mm -hmm. so I just hired a contractor to come in and put the stone work in and we uh, here tried to use again local rock everything we did and let me show you the steps back here it's really cool looks so great here and I love the color that you have picked out for the siding thank you One of my favorite colors so on these steps I kind of wanted it to just look like the yurt just kind of fell down into the forest mm -hmm. and this was all natural. So I had a friend go out and collect the rocks to make my steps. And then all of my landscaping, I tried to use local stuff. Matter of fact, uh, I would go out into the woods and just dig up the fern and bring them here and retransplant them. And so everything is pretty natural. Uh, a few things that I went to, to purchase, but for the most part, it's just I just dug it up out of the woods there we and go. brought it here. There we go. Mm -hmm. Using the resources and looking, it looks like you almost live in harmony here with the with the environment. We try to. We try to. Um, another thing with the yurt is you've got to keep the maintenance on it. You have to wash it every year. Do you guys wash yours every year? We actually just ch you just changed out our siding and oh, put hard you? siding on it. Oh, did you? Yeah. I've got to come see. Yeah. Got to come see. We, we end up washing ours every year. And you can't really use a pressure washer. You just use a big pool brush. Mm. So, William and Rosa, thank you very much for showing us your yurt. And for those people who want to follow you and your adventures that you do, you have a blog. We do. We originally started our blog uh, for our friends because they're like, you're going to be gone for two months? How will we know you're doing okay? <laughs> so we're like, okay, we'll do a photo blog and you can follow us. <laughs> and so we kind of kept it up now and it's called leewardtravels.com.
That's great, and we'll leave that information in the show notes below. And for those of you who want to have a yurt experience, they have opened up their yurt on Airbnb, so if you want to see what life is like living in a yurt, make sure you can come check out her yurt and spend some time in, so you can check out that link in the show notes below as well. Thank you guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for those of you who would like to share in the experience of living in a yurt, William and Rosa now have their yurt, their dream yurt, post it on Airbnb for others to come and experience what it's like. So we'll leave that information in the show notes below and hope you enjoyed seeing Rosa and William's dream yurt.